to go out to my hospital this evening, so. And be employee number seven? Employee number seven working the night, so ain't no drinking. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm not working. So. This is Good like for you. you. Taunt me. Taunt me with your alcohol. Well, I, I actually, so we've got this, this really old decanter thing. Uh -huh. And it's got these in it. My wife filled them up. And I don't know what she put in them. So I don't even know what this is that I'm drinking. <laughs> don't even know what you're drinking, huh? All I know is it's like got a cinnamony taste to it. And I'm not really hip on that. So I don't care, I guess. So that's all we got there. So tonight we got a mailbox behind you, a commercial diver's mask, a yep. hammer. A beach ball. And a poker chip somewhere. My poker chip. I don't know if you can see that. Very nice. That's uh, compliments of Brenda Farley. Brenda had sent me uh, this little knife thing, mm -hmm. and she sent me a poker chip, and she thought I would use the knife. And, you know, the knife, I'm going to use the poker chip more than the knife. I like the knife, and I don't want to screw it up. Mm -hmm. But when I go out to play poker, I'll use this as my chip protector. Okay, there well, you would have. This is why we can't have nice things right this is there. Why we can't have nice things. So anyhow, all right. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about chemicals and what we use in this industry. And uh, Dennis, uh, I hope I get his last name correctly. Lo, Lo Piccolo. I think that's what it is. Lo Piccolo. Um, he's with Grizzly Softwash. He's usually on here anyhow. And uh, he just asked about the different chemicals that we use. And I thought, um, you know, that's a really good thing to talk about. Because I know for me, I'm very much so not a uh, mix my own stuff guy. Right. And I know that you mix your own stuff sometimes. And so I thought that would be a good thing to talk about, too. Because for me, I, I look at it very simply from the aspect of I don't want the liability of of mixing different things together and you know what exactly is <laughs> oh, I want to a nice little burn right there well yeah actually i was just yeah yep exactly i was going to talk about that here in just a second um yeah so For talk about mixing stuff. your own stuff and 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 you know let me start this off by saying it takes no time at all to be uncomfortable and, and think think about that it takes zero time at all to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got a leaking gun, if you want to be uncomfortable, just don't take any time at all. Take no time and don't fix it. If your windshield's dirty and, and it's uncomfortable or un uh, tough to look out of it, um, you know, just, just, you know, don't, don't do anything about it. Right here is a prime example. That's from First a leaking day. gun, isn't it? Yesterday, that was from a leaky gun, and uh -huh. this goes down here. All, and I will save you all the, the, the disgust of looking at my ginormous belly uh, that it goes down. Um, but, yeah, I was, I was spraying from a ladder um, on a real large, uh, tall-pitched concrete uh, tile roof with a 40% you know, mix or so, and it ran – down the gun, up there, and, and as I was, you know, it was okay as long as as long as my elbow was down. And but then it down. There, I mean, all this, and you know, kept me uh, uh, up all night, you know, on there, and you know, my O-ring kind of started tearing on there. Not O-ring, but the 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 gasket on because we just use Gilmore guns, slow drip, slow drip, and and I kept on telling myself get off this damn ladder and go fix that. And then it was like, ah, it's just, just a minute more, just a, a minute more, more. A little more, a little more. And a minute more turned into, Come you on. know, an hour of spraying that way. And then, you know, whenever you get, whenever you get that chemical burn on there of a 20, 30, 40%, then you could have literally a half a percent on there and it burns again, just like the, the original burn. One of my worst ones with a leaking gun was, uh, of course, middle of a hot summer doing a roof job. The gun was leaking, and it's running down your arm, just like you're saying. 
And then I would come down off the ladder and I would bend over and my ground guy would rinse my arm down. Right. Okay, great. No problem. Um, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to push through, not a big deal. And I kept going like that. So I sprayed pretty much all day roof mix, you know, with it running down and it was getting right here and then he would wet me down and it would be good. Right. No problem. So then I drive home and I, you know, I'm not thinking of anything. Um, I, I'm realizing, you know, I'm kind of burning here, you know, a little bit. Um, but it wasn't until I got out the truck, I realized just how, I mean, from here down to here, down to right in some crack somewhere. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, I had a nice little burn on that sucker for a while. And uh, it wasn't a brown eye anymore. It was definitely a red eye. Yeah. And, and it, that, ever since then, no. Nope. Leaking gun, period. It's got to go. Up and yeah, gotta fix the break down, you know, I, 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 I violated my own rule yesterday. And we have these rules, you know, for a reason. Right. So I, I didn't it's take time. Time. I did not take time. And now I'm uncomfortable. So on your trucks, what are the main chemicals you carry? So for me, the main chemicals I carry, I carry, of course, SH. What is SH? I can't remember. Any, so I carry the, I carry bleach. I carry uh, apple wash and slow-mo mixed together as my surfactant. And then on my truck, I always have, I have EBC. I have um, uh, one restore. It to me is a, is a must have on the truck as well. Um, we will have one of the things that I like to have. It's so is uh, stainless steel wipes. Believe it or not, I like the stainless steel wipes because they um, help to get rid of tarnish on things, and yeah. they help to bring back like uh, anodized aluminum, the, the the aluminum stuff. If it gets messed yeah. up, you can wipe it down. It helps to uh, kind of make copper even look better. Some of the copper different uh, mm. um, lanterns, I guess, um, things like maybe Agent Halt. Um, I don't use, you know, Agent Clean or Agent uh, Green, um, but I do have Agent Halt. Um, the other thing that we have on there, so I'll typically have either some Gutter Butter or Cleanse All BC will be on mm -hmm. the trucks. Um, I do kind of prefer the, uh, the Gutter Butter. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, those are the basics, I guess. I mean, I'm trying to think of what else we might carry on there. I carry WD-40 for, you know, yeah. spraying down stuff all the time as a regular basis. Um, I, right off the top of my head, that's that that's mainly what I guess we carry on the truck. Yeah. Um, ours is a real similar list. I mean, I do, I do, you know, my, my basic soap is apple wash and secret agent mixed. I mean, and I know there's, there's so many people that have a lot of questions about the soaps and I don't mean this to disparage any soap maker whatsoever. But the reason that there's so many soaps out there is because soaps are really, really, really profitable. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand that people make a, a crap ton off of soaps because for the most part, it's mostly water that you're buying. And you can go and say, well, I like slow-mo or I like agent clean and send it to your chemist. If you're a, a distributor or you're hell, you could do dug wash, you know, and, and send it over to someone say, analyze this. I want you to package it for me. And, you know, they can tell you exactly what's in it. And, um, you know, it, you, you know, you may not have the formula, but, but at the same time, you've got the formula. They can copy, you know, I think that happened. Um, there was somebody, you know, saying that they had, they had copied EBC and, and kept on telling everybody, oh, this is an exact copy because it comes from the same blender as EBC uh, does. So um, a lot of, a lot of questions going on here, but, you know, and, and so, the EBC, there's a, there's also a, a, a distinction between a surfactant or then a surfactant and a detergent. Mm -hmm. EBC would be more in that detergent surfactant group because, you know, a detergent is actually going to help to to break down some of the oils and or dirts mm -hmm. that are on there. A surfactant really is just going to help, help it stick and help the water stay wetter on there. Mm -hmm. But there's, yeah, it'll, it'll break the, the tension um, on there. So, 
there's really a lot of there's so much confusion, you know, and, and everybody. You know, Russ Johnson has his own soaps. Um, uh, the guy Pressure Tech has his own soaps. Michael Henderletter has his own soaps. Power Wash Store has their mm -hmm. own soaps. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason that Jamie Schmidt is now making blueberry wash and green apple wash. You know, for mm -hmm. his store. I mean, there's. You know, Apple Wash was from the Power Wash store was the first one. Hey, Brian, what's happening? Um, the 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 that was the first one that I knew of. That was the colored soap, you know, that had the the smell and the marker and the the, the surfactant in there. Um, yeah, Scott, Scott's got his Scott own. His own soap. Um, you know, there's a lot of bathing soap. There's a lot of guys out, not even a lot, but, but I know quite a few, like, you know, Colin Fidget, he was making his own brand of soap for a while, and he wasn't even reselling it. And then you know, all of a sudden it was just like, well, we've got kind of a price break on it. And I think that was one of the reasons he opened up his little supply place up in Jersey, because he had a whole bunch of soap sitting around uh, that that was branded. So making your own soap isn't, isn't you know, that tough of a thing to do. You'd be amazed at how many blenders that are out there. That's also part of the confusion with the soaps because it's so stinking profitable to make a lot of, a lot of vendors get out there and make soaps to sell. And there are, there are a lot of good soaps out there. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I know I've tried so many different soaps altogether, just trying to find what really works best for me. Mm -hmm. I absolutely unequivocally love Apple Wash and I love it for its color, its its marker, and then for its scent. I, I'm not a fan of Apple Wash from the surfactant side of it. And that's why I do mix it with something else. Same here. Um, Same here. And, and I, I, you know, again, I tried a lot of them. The slow-mo I like because I can actually get my solution to stop on the route if that's what I want it to do. And so um, if it's cold or if it's warm, both, I can get it to stop just by turning up the dial. Um, so that's the main reason that I used it. So I want to go ahead and answer Candace's uh, question here. What do you use EBC and One Restore for? Um, I use EBC mainly for any uh, oils or uh, like on the driveways, I'll use it for um, any oil stains, spots, things like that. But also uh, barbecue pits. So here in Louisiana, we've got a lot of indoor, outdoor kitchen things, and they've got the hoods and they've got all. So I like the EBC for behind the walls right there. We can kind of scrub it in and get it down. Real good on smoke. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I use the EBC for. One yeah. Restore. Um, let me see. I use one Restore. I use One Restore on my toothbrush. No, I, I mean I love One Restore. One Restore is great if if there's ever a stain I'm just not sure of that's not coming out for whatever right. reason. I I generally will hit it with One Restore and yeah. I'm successful with it a lot of times. It's a really yeah. good. Oh, uh, F9 Bark is the other one that I carry um, on the, on all the trucks. So um, we do carry World's Best. Yeah, as well. Um, though it, it doesn't get used all that often. It's used often. There, there's another one from World's Best, and also I think as you know, Candace, you know, it, everybody under, needs to understand, and, and somebody else who made that that acids and bases don't mix, and understand the difference between the acids and the bases. One of my frustrations I get so much with these, with with a lot of the the groups in here going, oh yeah, put some. Put some bleach and then then mix it with muriatic acid. You know, yeah, and let's kill each other um, mm -hmm. and half the people in the in the you know neighborhood. So, um, you know, you don't mix an acid with a base because one, they will neutralize each other. Two, they have a very strong possibility of making a very toxic fume on there. Mm -hmm. Poisoning but that. one restore is 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 a soapy. Buffered HCL. It's a, it's a, they call it a construction soap, mm -hmm. but it is very much an acid. And I, and I'm the same way. If it's an inorganic type stain, 
It works great for, for calcium spots on windows. It works great for, it does okay on rust stains. It actually does very good on efflorescence, I found, mm -hmm. uh, if, if done correctly. Get rid of so, copper stain or co green copper stains. Yep, yeah, yeah, green copper stains, real, real good on, on green copper stains with about 600 PSI. Man, it, it's good. Now, one that, 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 that people swear by, and I have not done it, I have not used it myself for this reason, but I've heard multiple people swear by EBC in their house wash mix because EBC has degreasing properties, but when diluted, um, it's not a degreaser. When diluted to a certain percentage, it's not a degreaser. Daniel Howerton, who's, who's a window cleaner who became a, a pressure washer, he says his windows look absolutely amazing after you know, putting EBC on there. Mm -hmm. I've had the same results with, with, um, a secret agent on, mm -hmm. on there. You know, that good sudsy foam, um, really, really helps him there. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. is it as good as a, as a water fed pole on a window or a traditional squeegee? No, but you know, we tell our Sometimes people. Sometimes they shine though, I'm telling you. Yeah. We are our people. We, we very rarely get, you know, once they see their windows, they're like, Oh, that's not good enough that rarely, rarely ever happens with us. So, so Jacob, I typically get those at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, I can't, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's like Wiseman, Wiseman's or something like that. I like the wipes and they come in the tube and you just pull the wipes out. And so I, I get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. Well, there's one that and I can't think of. I was looking if I have one here because they actually keep the the, the, the tubs around after I'm done with it, but it's a pop-up degreasing we used to use in the hood industry. Mm -hmm. And we still order these things on Amazon. Um, and it's it's a, it's like one of those wipes, but it's got a little texture to it. So you can really get on it and scrub and it's got some d in it. So um, it smells a little citrusy and really, really good stuff. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give a little bit of a, so Greg um, is selling a, uh, a peroxide base. I'm not a peroxide fan, but there, that, that, that is out there. And I know that um, there are some strides that are being made for it, uh, you know, with, with peroxide products. Um, I think it's going to be a hard push in this industry because peroxide, I think has been tried before pushing it in this industry. Um, and it, it just didn't make it. But I mean, I also, in all fairness to him, I know there's some people who said, you know, they've used it and they've had, you know, results with it. So, right. um, hey, if it's safer on landscape, um, MTH, Brian saying he's heard some, some horror stories about Apple wash on windows, not rinsing. Well, I've, I've not heard that, but you know, I've, I've heard horror stories, I guess, on anything on windows, not rinsing. Well, if you put too much soap and God knows if you let it dry, <laughs> well, the other side of it is too is that if you use Apple Wash on Windows and you don't mix bleach in with it, yeah, you're you're gonna you can end up having some issues because it 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 the bleach is there to help take that color out of it, and so if you don't, yeah, you're leaving that color behind. Throw I, I've had the guys before. Oh, you know the whole oh everything is stained, it's stained, it's stained. I use Apple Wash, it's stained. Oh. Did you throw a little bleach on there? <laughs> no, it's stained anymore. Yeah. Here's a good one. Um, different uh, uh, strengths of degreasers, also uh, residential versus commercial concrete. Always lots of questions about that. So degreasers, you primarily have two different types of, of degreasers. You have a butyl-based degreaser or a, 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 a butyl-based degreaser, which like the agent blue or a safer, nicer or a non-caustic a non degreaser. Um, mm -hmm. A certain strength of EBC would be that way. Um, a lot of the degreasers, the the, the butyl based, um, the non caustic degreasers, actually work very similar to to gutter butter, and they actually have some some oxidation removal tendencies to them. And you can you can remove oxidation with Agent Blue if if you wish to scrub a little bit out there. Out there. 
Um, so, but now, now, gold assassin, I believe, is a uh, well, cost. Yeah, ground force, uh, ground force. Gold assassin. Yeah. Trevor Shamblin has nitro oh, nine. Nitro nine Those are all caustic. And if you don't know what caustic means, it, 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 it I mean, bleach is caustic, but they don't have bleach in it. But caustic just means that it, it, it can be a severe irritant and 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 destroy material, I believe. Um, so the, 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 like you spray, well, hell, I was in a garage today using a uh, gold assassin and, you know, you, you, you get some, some gold assassin splashed up on your leg. It's spicy. You feel it. You know, you get agent blue splashed up on your leg or, or red Raider. You don't feel it that much. You don't feel it at all, but it's, it's more just soapy ish feeling. It's, it's like, you know, the old Fantastic or the Kitchen Degreasers is actually really what it smells like and what it feels like. You get a, a caustic degreaser, which you're going to use for a restaurant, a dumpster pad or, 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 or you know, kitchen walk area or food grease or, or um, yeah, you know, that they're, they're, they're spicy. And I'll tell you what else. They will, typically speaking, the, the, the caustic part in there comes from... Um, uh, sodium hydroxide, the other, the other SH, and uh, and this is where I was talking about or, or caustic soda beads. It's also called, but but in its in its raw form, can actually be extremely dangerous to use. And that's where I was talking about earlier, where you know a lot of guys have a tendency to to say, uh, you don't need to buy that chemical. All you got to do is mix this and mix that and. You know, you put this much, and that's where I've always had the issue with, you know, my guys aren't trained chemists. They're not, you know, there's a lot of arguments that you could make. Well, you're still mixing bleach and soap. You know, I mean, what's the difference? Well, there's a big difference. And most of the things that we use, um, I'll use uh, uh, Craig Harrison and, and F9 as, as the example, you know, where, you um, you know, he had, I, I don't know the, 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 I'll get the story wrong, but he had mixed different things and burned himself up pretty good or burned up his lungs or something pretty good at, at one point in, early in his career. And so he's got buffering agents and things like that. For me, it's more about um, the safety aspect of it for my guys. It's a great product, works really well on many different things. And that's what I try to do is I try to find those products that I feel like work really well that my guys don't have to mix. And, and for me, quite frankly, I also look at it as in, if you're not charging enough to, you know, if you, if, if you're worried about the cost of your soap, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I guess if I mixed my own soaps and all that, you know, what am I going to save every year? Five grand. Yeah. I, I don't, I simply don't care about that 5,000 right. yeah. over the, over the lifespan of that year. Exactly. Really and besides your customers are paying for the, for the soaps anyway, you know, Scott made a, a very good point here, trained to mix and use caustic soda because they use it in the refinery. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get very hurt and amen. I mean, that's like I just said, I mean, you, I, I've heard the horror stories. Hell, I've seen the horror stories mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, when we used to clean hoods and it's, and it's always, you know, you add you add the caustic soda or the sodium hydroxide to the water, not adding the water to the, to the you know, because you can put, you can go dump up um, uh, uh, that much, you know, sodium hydroxide in a bucket and then stick it under the sink and start putting the water in there. And you'll literally have, you can have an explosion. I mean, not a, not a fire explosion, but a foam up, you know, over the, and depending on the, 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 the tub size or the neck of it, it can literally get to the point where it, it volcanoes up out of the pump up sprayer. Mm -hmm. um, really dangerous. And you get a strong caustic mix on you, you will get a, it'll make, it'll make this burn right here seem like nothing at all. Mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll, it, it'll, it'll hurt you bad, bad, and bad. Quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so this one says, how about for the newer guys, about the different types and strengths of degreaser. Um, we kind of already went over that a little bit. Um, that's, what I, that's what I was alluding to just a minute ago with the, with the, the differences in the caustic and the, and the, the caustic and the non-caustic. I mean, if, if, and again, the other problems you have with the caustic degreasers is if you just go willy nilly with your pump up sprayer, you know, you can really mess up restaurant doors uh, you can you can mess up metal elements. Um, 
um, really have a have a, 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 a bad, bad, bad problem with that. And that's why a lot of guys, you know, work with the EBCs and the safety greasers to start with until you know what the heck you're doing out there. Yeah. Um, I like this. Wild West uh, Wash Services says always add acid to water, never right. water to acid. And if you're batch mixing, even your bleach, it's the same thing. You should you should be adding your bleach to the water and not your water to the bleach. And, right. and the same thing here with your the main reason for that really is is splashback, right? right? So if it's full of water and you start to dump your 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 acid in there, right, and it does happen to splash and get on you then you're going to be splashing more water than anything else, where if yeah. it's already an acid, you hit it with a little bit of water, what's splashing out is that acid, and yeah. that's what's going to burn you up. Absolutely, yeah, because because it's pre-diluted at that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, wear your PPE. Dear God, wear your PPE, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. yesterday, whenever I was spraying and I was getting that rundown, I mean, I, I still had the respirator on, and I still had, you know, these, you know, good, a decent wrap, you know, glasses on and, and, you know, wear your PPE. Uh, clean them glasses up too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a go. What neutralizer do you carry for eyes and skin? I mean, we always, we, we keep a saline solution in all the trucks and have an eye wash down station here in the shop. Um, you know, water is, to me, water is best. I, I would never sit there and, you know, people talk about, oh, well, you know, you pour an acid on, on, on there to, to bring your pH back. I mean, you, you put a shock like that, you're, you're, you, you never want to go and two-step your skin. I mean, because think about that's For those of you who don't know what two-stepping is, you're going to throw an acid on a truck and then a base on a truck, and it shocks the dirt off of it, um, you know. I'm trying to think of the stuff that uh, Ed Kowalski had uh, – turned me on to, you, you buy it at a, uh, at a pet store, a uh, pet supply mm -hmm. store. And I'm trying to think of the name of it, um, but it is. Uh, thiosulfate? Yeah, it, it's uh, some fish thing. And, and yeah, thiosulfate. And that's, that's really the primary ingredient in Agent Halt. And, and we'll, we'll rub that on our skins and rub our hands down with that as well. So Yeah, and that's still um, there. I mean, it, it is something that you can carry. It and it will if you get like you're spraying a roof and you yeah. get the wind comes back, hits you in the face, you can use that to help neutralize yeah. it on your face without, um, you know, putting another chemical on your skin, to be honest with you. I mean, so something like that will, will help and it's, it's easily carried. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, here, here's here's what 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 up is just our water bottles. I mean, saline is great, but keeping those water bottles to flush things off, um, pure, clean water, that's yeah. a, a good thing to carry. But, um, you know, you could have, they have, they sell eye wash stations, portable eye wash stations that are good to have. You can get, I mean, it's a quart of saline with an eye cup on it. And we have those in all the, all the vehicles. Um, you know, it's purple power. Jeff is out there. Is, is, is purple power any good? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, ironically, a company that, that, that I won't name, um, that I won't name at all because I would never want to give away a, a, a trade secret. I, I was shocked to see as many purple power buckets as, as I did at their, at their thing. And, and cause they they really take um, the tradesman's tools, which, you know, is saying, hey, we really can't, you know, I mean, newsflash, we're really not supposed to carry more than eight gallons of a liquid with us. Mm -hmm. I know there's some debate on that, but if you want to go strict letter of the law, eight gallons is, is what that's tools of trade type limit there. But, um, you know, sometimes it's just the easiest for them to get the purple power in by, by the thing. I found the purple power to be very similar to the agent blue. I've found it to be very similar to the red Raider. I've found it to be similar to most of the non caustic degreasers out there. You know what I've used purple power for? Um, and I used to carry it on the trucks, believe it or not, because it is very effective, honestly, on uh, tiger stripes that are uh, not that, if they're not that bad. And so it's a readily available um, degreaser because um, yeah. Purple Power is a degreaser. And so it, it, will, it will work on things like tiger stripes. It will work on soot. It, it's not as, it, it'll, it'll work on oxidation removal. It's not as good as some, the ones that are made more specifically for that purpose, but it is an all around good product, yeah. I think, that you can get locally. 
Scott, Scott had mentioned a uh, um, earlier, and let me go back to that comment. The hot, I think it was a hot stain remover. Um, you know, that, that's a company, um, hot stain remover EcoChem. I have really been impressed with the EcoChem line, and, and the EcoChem is who makes um, the, the Brightenol, the Cleansol, and uh, the One Restore out and, there. And, and several they, more. They have one called CTAR Remover, and they have Hot Stain Remover. And it's really good professional grade chemicals. And I believe uh, Power Wash or Nashville carries a, a full line of them. Yeah, EcoChem uh, products I really like. Um, there is a guy that is now he's a rep that has been in the academy, um, so he you know he does chime in on stuff. And uh, yeah. e EcoChem is I, I love their product. Line. Yeah. I really do. I, Scott said he had two step leak on him before it took six, six months to get right, and and I would actually argue that some people Never. would say you're still not right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Both of us on the same spots. He's still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have that banner going across the bottom too. Oh, uh, uh, the the. Which one? The there you go. No, I had it. You took it off. Ah, and I admit it. Yeah. We click on things at the same time, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. But just so you guys know, if you go to the courses .com, <laughs> that's where you're going to find the current classes that we have, and. Um, there are several things that we're that we're working on and that we're planning on. Uh, the, I mean, if if Ray were to turn the camera over to the board over there, there's all kinds of stuff we got planned. Yeah, that's that's all stuff we got we got. In yeah, the that quick. yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's gonna go back and slow it down, stop yeah. and zoom slow in. Slow down and yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it's there's a lot that we have planned. It's just gonna take some time to get there and get it all in there and. Dave um, saying there's one from LNH, so from Mike's place, a wipeout from LNH, great for gutter tiger stripes oxidation removal. You know, it, it's um, mm -hmm. Mike has a rust removal product called LH100 that I like a lot. Yeah, um, I like a lot, a lot. It's good stuff. You know, at the, and and at the end of the day, that's one of the things is that first of all, you have to learn what's good for you to carry on your truck. You take the suggestions of everybody, but you also have to remember one of the things that I, we, we preach about all the time, and that is we're in different areas, and different yeah. areas are affected by different things. I mean, atmosphere, pressure, temperature, humidity, all these things can affect what what is used and how it's used. And so I might absolutely love a product, and then you go and you try it, and you're like, well, this sucks. Yeah, and it had it could have something to do with area. So keep that in mind, and then find out what works best for you, and you know go from there. I, I know when I first started, hey, I was on the gain train. I'm, I'll admit, you know, uh, gain is a good surfactant for the most part. You know, yeah. and it, it's just that uh, to me, you know, I want to be as professional as possible. I don't want to get caught using it, and then. Once I realized it says right on the back of the bottle, don't mix with bleach, I was like, you know, this is pretty stupid yeah. for me to be used. So I heard a, I heard a story um, about a, um, a uh, um, oh, it was a, uh, and I'm going to get to Al's comment here in just a minute. But I heard a story about a washer um, that had a landscape issue that was probably more of a weather related uh, issue than anything. But the insurance company was asking him about what were you using soap wise. And I think that the insurance company basically told them that if, if you were one of these guys using Dawn or gain or something like that, they're not. You know, basically, yeah. Because, because it, you, you know, you're not supposed to be using that. That's not an industry standard soap in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's the whole thing. A lot of people don't realize when, even soaps can can you can be affected in your insurance just by the soap that you and it's not necessarily I'm going to say about the the soap in particular it's about going against the manufacturer's yeah. recommendations right there on the bottle and if you're doing that and and you know we've had this discussion before and then people will say well you know I don't tell I'm not going to tell them I'm using gain no but it, <laughs> If, if they really want to get nasty, let, let's let's just say for an argument's sake 
that somebody walks out. We had this happen in the industry, right, where um, the old man walks out, slips on the leftover soap, falls and cracks his head and dies, right? That was in Tallahassee. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, happened to one of my competitors here. Imagine that that insurance, that that, not that that insurance, but that lawyer says, I want every receipt that you ever had. And they say, okay, I have a thousand receipts for gain. I have no receipts for anything else. And you're mm -hmm. saying you use what in your mix? And now you get caught up in a lie and you're right. toast after that. So yeah. you have to think about those things unless you're paying cash on the side, which negates I mean, you got to start, you got to look at all of that and say, I'm using it to write this off. If I can't write it off, that's part of my cost, right? Yeah. Why, why the hell am I in business if I can't write stuff off? I mean, exactly. you know, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if actually we've actually bought laundry soap at the house in, in 12 years yeah. um, <laughs> because it's a write off. Um, you know, but that's only because you use the laundry soap there. At your shop, well, we wash you our shop empty rags. bottles home. Yeah, we wash our shop rags with it. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. A lot of empty rags. bottles home because you like to. Yeah, to, yeah that's what um, it is. Yeah. You know, and and some, and I, I'll be the first to, to say, you know, I used my secret used to be liquid Purex, and and you know, and, and listen, guys, I understand. I'm I'm telling you guys, please use professional soaps. It's not an extra expense. It really is not. Just use professional soap. She'll step your game up. I want to, uh, you know, what? I'll, I'll tell you why I don't use Purple Power anymore myself. Mm -hmm. I remember being at, at an account that, that pays me five figures a month to be at. I could finish this sentence. I, won't, yep. I, won't I was out there talking to the maintenance guy at about 2 a.m. one morning, and he's like, yeah, man, we got one of these hot teas here myself. You know, I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, what you putting down there? And he's like, look at the back of my trailer. And I was like, oh, Purple Power, you get that at Lowe's, right? And I'm thinking, yeah, man, this stuff really works pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. And then and I realized all of a sudden, as I'm, as I'm, I'm like, I just told this Bing. guy exactly. Bing. He told me that they have the exact same machine. And I just told him what I'm using. And he knows to go get it at Home Depot and Lowe's and Duh. I mean, if they wanted to say, well, I'm sitting around here at two o'clock in the morning, not doing squat, boss. Why don't you let us do the pressure washing? Yep. I would have lost that account right there. That, that's the same reason that I don't carry purple power anymore. I don't want any soap that you can go. I don't want any product. Now, I, I did say I go and I get them those those wipes. OK, mm -hmm. but I, I really don't want any product that is going to be something that the homeowner can go and just get themselves. Yeah or that my uh, property manager can just go and get himself and he can, yep. he can take and put his guys out there and do the same thing. I don't want to do that. I don't, I want, I want to look as professional as possible and I don't want you just realizing, Hey, I can just take it away anytime I want. So um, Al, I want to get into this out speaking chemical reactions to try a new lemon scent to mix with my bleach in addition to el eliminator blink. each think about exploded crazy heat, crazy gas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of these things are not compatible. They do not play nicely with each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 100%. Carlos made the comment. Yep. You are guys work in the stain versus always flood coating. Understand ratios and the capability of your product. Take er time early on to match this approach. 100%, Carlos. Um, <laughs> you know, if, 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 it, if it has a ratio on the back of it, you whatever it says. Like, here's a prime example. Cleanse all. Cleanse all actually tells you to go and cut it like four to one and then apply it at a 12 to one or, or whatever, four to one downstream ratio. So if you if you miss that first part and you just start glugging it on the surface, you're literally wasting product and you're putting it on like four or five times stronger than it needs to be. You're wasting well, product and you're potentially damaging your siding on there. Well, not only that, but it's also, um, you know, Car Carlos taught me this a, a while back where uh, you need to add the water for the emulsification of it. And if you don't, then the product doesn't work as, as it's supposed to. I did a comparison with EBC and another product, put them side by side and, you know, into the same oil stain. And I used them both full strength. And I got that phone call from Carlos. You know, that's not going to work right. <laughs> Because you some things you need to add that water yeah, to the water to right yeah to let it do its job so right. thinking that putting it down at full strength is going to be better doesn't mean that it is 
Yeah. If there's Scott's that don't have shit on your truck, you can buy it at Home Depot. I mean, yeah. Um, best solution, what are your guys' best solution for cobwebs? Heavy soap for me. I mean, yeah. I, I, want, I want a lot of soap and, and to really weigh them down because it's, it's you're not, yeah. Um, but, but bleach and soap. I mean, if you can put bleach on there, a 1% mix will eat up the spider webs. It'll eat up the, the, the spiders themselves. And then you put a, a nice soap in there with it. The soap will grab hold of it. The bleach will eat it up and it'll yeah. just, it'll fall right off. Believe me, we got spiders here in South Louisiana. Um, Wild West is, is makes it before he shows up. No chemical containers in the truck. Yeah. But still, even have your, have, have your containers. Make sure they're labeled still. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> okay, Blaine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so look, going back to that. I know you mix your own chemicals at the shop. You do you, all that kind of fun stuff. But it does go back to this whole thing that we were talking about, about liability issues, right? If something happens, the lawyers are going to come in. They're going to ask for everything. It's not a, This isn't meant to be a scare tactic either. It's just it's plain reality. These things happen. And who do they happen to? You know, so you don't want to be you don't want to be that guy that's caught. Even your, your buffer tank with water should be labeled. And I, and I think what he's saying, I mean, he just goes ahead and pre-mixes them. And, he, you know, he also says here that he always labels. So, you know, right. absolutely. I mean, you, yeah. if, if something goes into a bucket on your truck, it better have a label or at least a writing on there. Another thing a lot of guys don't realize is that if it's a liquid and it's on your truck, you better have an SDS for it on your truck. You better have an SDS sheet. Yeah, I just had this uh, a little back and forth with, with Lori um, over um, uh, slow-mo because she's like, you you don't need to have it. Well, that's not what my DOT says here locally. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure why she didn't want to give up the SDS on it. And that's cool, I guess. Um, I'm still in the middle of trying to figure that one out because if they say you have to have it, then, yeah. I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do right. because... I got to have you have to have an SDS except for this chick in Florida. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound right to me. You know, for every yeah. chemical you have, you have every chemical except for something from PWP, that doesn't sound right. It doesn't make any sense. No. And why you wouldn't just give it up anyhow doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah. Um, when you do government trial, it, you know, Carlos, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that, but that's something we even have in the government contracting class. Typically speaking, yes, they do want your SDS sheets. Mm -hmm. Also, typically speaking, whenever I'm going after a, a bid like that, I'm going a real technical bid. I'm going to go ahead and give them the SDS sheets and say it in my estimate of this is what I'm using. This is what I'm, uh, you know, we're, we're using on here because it really sets you apart from your competition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the reasons I like the EBC, and I'm the same way. I mean, I've always got a a, 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 a one gallon thing of, a, 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 of EBC on the truck just because of the amazing name on there. You know, it's environmental bio cleaner. I mean, I don't know yeah. what's in it, if it's, if it's unicorn tears and leprechaun farts or if it's straight hydrochloric acid. It really doesn't bother me that much, but God, the name is awesome. Love the name. Love the name. <laughs> and, and, and when I'm talking to clients it's not ebc I, I well it is i say it's ebc and then i follow up with it's enviro bio cleaner <laughs> yeah <laughs> because exactly. that sounds way up over the top carlos is a brilliant man just don't tell him i said that mm -hmm. i want to go with that one too storm storm is saying don't yeah don't buy chemicals without an sds i mean i i'm pretty sure i i can't qu don't quote this as gospel but if somebody mails you chemical i think they're supposed to have an SDS sheet in that in that shipment as well. So, um, and uh, yeah, it, it might come, it, it might be push come to shove and it, it might be something where, I mean, I don't know. It's, we're going to, I think we'll find out here pretty soon if it, if it has to be or not have to be. And I'll say in 21 purple power works on spider webs. Scott, you know, I just did, I just did literally, three, four projects for um, DEP, Department of Environmental Protection.
here in Tallahassee. And yes, yeah, same thing. I mean, we had to go and do write-ups on everything. We had to, to, to send SDS sheets on everything. And I mean, I'm doing the freaking, you know, <laughs> the EP, basically the DEP is the state level, the state arm of the EPA. Um, I'm doing their lab. I've got every scientist in there, you know, I mean, it's kind of funny because the, the white collar guys over there are more like, Oh, we, you know, and the scientists over there are like, yeah, you're going to need some bleach, pretty strong bleach too. <laughs> Ray, just a quick reminder about your uh, key fob. Yeah, I got to go. I'm out. I'm just going to, uh, so Doug, you keep talking. I'm going to excuse myself. I have to go return a key fob to a garage that I was working at today because my dumb self walked out of the garage and didn't leave the key fob. So, and then I get to go enjoy a night shift. And I never thought I would work so hard after I sold my damn company, Doug. Yeah, this there you go. <laughs> Employee number seven, there you go. Employee number seven is rocking it and he is uh, cranking out the overtime right now, so. Uh, getting all the time wages. So, That's awesome. I love that. I'm going to remove myself and uh, and you uh, continue on and uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. Thanks, Sorry. guys. For your time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to finish up answering a couple questions here and then uh, I'll get out of here myself. But <clears throat> Tyler says, another question for you guys. I realized putting my soap and batch mixing my stuff the night before, it's making my SH mix do. You guys mix the night before or look, no, I, so first of all, Neither one of us batch mix anymore. Um, we both used to batch, batch mix. But for me, if you're mixing everything the night before, and, and you can use a, a, a chemical that is bleach friendly, okay? And it's not going to mess with the bleach at all. However, even just using water, the organic stuff in the water is going to fight with that bleach. And it's not going to be as strong in the morning as it is when you mix it up. So it's for me, it's just better to mix on site. Um, I won't buy chemicals without an SDS sheet. Absolutely. Uh, it's just, it's one of those things that, that happens. And I didn't think there would be a problem getting the SDS sheet from her. Uh, so I was quite surprised that I didn't get the SDS sheet, but we're going to find out, uh, how, how that, how that plays out, I think here in the very near future. So, um, let's see, Scott says they have, uh, to produce made if they won't. Uh, don't touch their products. Absolutely. And I think that's what it's going to end up being. If, if she's not willing to produce it, um, I'm going to be surprised. Um, but I, she, she also said she would send me something and she hasn't. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Al Bianca says uh, 20 to one purple power on spider webs. Yeah, really for me, spider webs, it's the bleach and the soap that's going to make it uh, come apart. Scott says, I have a customer that requires me to have them uh, prove anything before I use um, so before I use by their biologist. So their biologist, I know which job he's talking about, and that's a pretty uh, important thing. So, you know, um, having the biologist have to go through it first makes perfect sense because it's a large uh, fish hatchery. Um, Los is in the house. Uh, EBC is the only thing approved right now. EBC right there. That's again, as I said, when we started this whole conversation, EBC is one of the things that's always on the truck. Love that stuff. Uh, or on your phone. Yes, they are. Or see, and, th and this is really how it should be. Russ Johnson sends me SDS sheets with everything. And really that's kind of how I feel like it should be. Anything that you receive, they automatically should just be including the SDS sheets, even if it's something that they email to you. But a lot of times I know like with the power wash store products, same thing. I'll get the SDS sheet right there with it. And that's really how it should be. Uh, and then uh, Al also said, uh, keep all of it on your, uh, your phone, easy peasy. <clears throat> same thing with uh, Jeremy Kiefer sells a, uh, an SDS sheet booklet. And I think he's also got that on a, an app on the phone so that you can quickly act, you know, access all those. And the, the booklet that he has, really a good professional booklet. So if y'all are looking for SDS sheets to have in your trucks, you, know, you might contact Jeremy Kiefer and uh, see what he's got because he's, he's, he's got a really, really good booklet uh, out there for you. So I think that's it. Ray Ray is out of here. I think I'm out of here. I appreciate y'all for listening to us, and uh, we'll be out there on Monday. Appreciate it. Thank you.